Other than the fit, what was Ms. Zander changing? She wasn't changing anything. She had proved everything along the way. Okay. I can interject. Yeah, that. please. She brought another neighbor kind of half a sleepover to kind of bring in to the mix. He just started throwing in his two cents, so to speak. And that really kind of, uh, he wasn't part of the original plan. He was just an opinion. And it didn't really fit to what we needed to deal with. All right, Ms. Zander, who is this half asleep gentleman? The half asleep gentleman was my cross the street neighbor. And he was just waking up. He was a contractor <laughs> for Costco. Okay, so he was a contractor. That's why you brought him over. No, I brought oh. him over because I was not comfortable with what had happened prior to that at my house with these gentlemen. I wanted <sighs> someone to witness, and I did not feel safe. Okay. And he never got a chance to say anything edgewise. He basically walked across the street. They said, we're not going to deal with this. They both picked up the gate, threw it in the truck, and left. My neighbor never said a word. Did he say anything? He, he interjected a few things, yes. What? I believe he said something about the price. Judge Corriero. Ms. Zander, what do you do for a living? I sell legal support services to law firms. And what is the significance of the front of the gate? It was specifically customized for you? It was a dog? Right. They're Scotty dogs, which is kind of my passion. Is that a necklace there? Scotty. With... I decided if we're talking about the Scotty gate, I'd wear the Scotty necklace. <laughs> okay. Ordinarily, we would decide these kinds of cases on what we call a quantum merit basis. In other words, what was the value of the work that the defendant did, even though the work wasn't completed to the satisfaction of the person hiring them? The problem here is the missing gate. Ordinarily, we say, okay, give what you produced to the plaintiff, and you should pay for the value of what they give you. We don't have the gate. When did you get rid of the gate? It's been close to three years. My iron worker storage is only so much that we can carry for so long. Right. So it got repurposed. You contracted for the total job approximately $4,000. Yes. The plaintiff paid you $2,000. You claim that you were entitled to monies for the work that you did. Well, I paid my subcontractor up to that point, the uh, iron worker that does there my There was bonus. one email that impressed me about your pride in what you do. You essentially said that the customer is always right and we will accommodate the customer. Why didn't you give her the gate when she was dissatisfied with it, since you had already received $2,000? Why didn't you give her the gate when this thing devolved into irreconcilable difference? If I may, we, we tried to give her the gate. You would give her the gate if she gave you an additional $500. Correct. Wouldn't it have been simpler if you returned to the gate and you kept your $2,000 and you walked away from a difficult situation? The conversation probably would have eventually gone there. That was the last email. And it was just a total of the time and effort we had put into it in actuality, and we put a lot more than 2,500 into it. We just figured that was a good place to communicate. Did you eventually get a gate? Yes, at my house. With the yes. Scotties on the, on the front? Yes. <laughs> all right, so you're happy with the gate now? Yes. Okay, any okay. other questions? All right, we'll excuse you all while we deliberate in this case. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have reached a unanimous verdict. And Mr. Cox, your email that Judge Corriero pointed out about the customer being right is important, especially in a business like yours. In that email, you said that she didn't feel like she was being heard and that you were going to do whatever it took for her to feel like she was being heard and was satisfied with your services. We believe that Ms. Zander was not heard and there was the same issue time after time about the fit and then the artistic component would come in. We believe that the plaintiff did pay you more than what was actually due at the time. If we had a gate, maybe this verdict would be different. If you maybe had offered to drop the gate off without the condition of Ms. Sander paying more money, this, again, maybe would have been a different verdict. But that wasn't the case. You were asking for her to pay more money in order to get the gate. We believe that Ms. Zander has proven her case today. We believe that you are entitled, Ms. Zander, to the full $2,000 that you paid for a gate that you don't have, and you spent additional money having to replace the gate that you didn't get. So that is the verdict today in favor of the plaintiff, Ms. Zander, for $2,000.